timeout. 30 seconds. Start it now, please. So what? So it's not going to be easy. It's going to be really hard. And we're going to have to work at this every day, but I want to do that because I want you. I want all of you forever, you and me, every day. <laughs> Will you do something for me? Please? You just picture your life for me? 30 years from now, 40 years from now? What's it look like? If it's with that guy, go. Go! I lost you once. I think I could do it again. If I thought it's what you really wanted. But don't you take the easy way out. What easy way? There is no easy way. No matter what I do, somebody gets hurt. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want. What he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's... do you want? God damn it. What do you want? I have to go. Hey, what's up? My name is Munchie. I'm a former athlete just like you or somebody you know, and this is 30 or Full. But before we get started, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, turn on your notifications so you can make sure you are in the loop on our future releases. All right, appreciate you. Peace. If you're like me, you could probably do without ever hearing or seeing anything to do with the notebook ever again. But if you happen to be watching or listening to this with your significant other, guys, I'm talking to you, or someone you'd rather not admit that to, you know, admit that you don't like the notebook, you may not be able to admit it right now at this moment, but just know I'm with you. I'm with you. I am your ally in this fight to make that movie go away forever. I mean, you got to be my age. I'm 36 to really understand that. So anyway, we're on the same page. But this particular scene from the movie that is The Notebook, I thought was pretty poignant. And again, I like that word poignant. I've said it on other content that we've created. Pretty poignant reminder of the feeling an athlete is faced with at the actual end of their competitive athletic career. Why? Well, I believe that every single one of us knows from the time we start playing sports that sports are not something that we could play forever, right? At least physically. You know, again, back to the time we started playing, we all knew that. We heard it at some point in time. Somebody has said that. Somewhere, someone at some time told you that, hey, you, you can't do this forever, right? <laughs> and it's an obvious fact. You know, it doesn't really sink in until the end actually comes. But why is that? Message! That's why your teeth are so yellow. <laughs> yellow beat up! Well, unfortunately, I don't have the actual answer, um, but I do hope to take a stab at a possible reason to hopefully spark some conversation or feedback from anybody that uh, may come across this and feel kind of kind enough to give us some feedback. So my theory is that the idea of being an athlete never really looked in our minds the way it was always in reality. Like for me, uh, considering the era I grew up in, for anybody interested, I'm 36, I'll be 37 in about four days. Uh, this is being written in 2022, February to be exact. I'm an 80s baby, grew up in the 90s. So for anybody my age or close to my age that remember was, uh, remembers what life was like before the internet existed, uh, there's never been a time where we have so much access to college and pro athletes and their actual lives and, and who these people are as actual people. Uh, you know, like what their literal day-to-day -day lives look like, sound like, even feel like, thanks to Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, all these things. And it's truly, I call it a remarkable thing to consider as a, as a former athlete. Like most of what we could see back then in the 80s and 90s was a representation of what we thought athletes were based on what we saw on TV or, you know, major national media outlets. So athletes looked larger than life for the most part. They lived lavish lives. You know, they, they performed superhuman feats. They never had bad days. They didn't get sick, didn't have worries and insecurities, and, and none of that existed. They were more than human to most of us especially the young and impressionable teens and, and preteens. So the answer to the universal question to kids playing sports at that time period of, hey, what do you want to do when you grow up was naturally, I want to be a professional blank player. You know, insert whatever sport in that blank, um, at least within the circle of friends and, 
and, uh, and teammates that I grew up around. So now obviously if you happen to be from an area where actual pro athletes came from or college athletes came from the more dense, po densely populated area, you probably had more pros that actually came through or college players that actually came through. That changes things in terms of your belief as a uh, budding sports teen. Uh, the athletes weren't just things you saw on TV or screens or read in the, pa in the paper in that case. But um, in my case, they weren't things or people that I could actually physically touch and talk to and ask questions. So I really didn't understand what their life was really like. Now, you're probably asking, what the heck does this have to do with the notebook clip, though? Well, it's not so much about the love story that is the notebook as much as I hate the movie. Um, I do know the plot and build up to that particular scene all too well. Uh, my reasoning in using that clip for this particular audience, for us, no matter how small it may be, is to draw a comparison between the essence of that scene and the internal dilemma that all athletes are forced to face at some point in, the, in time in their competitive careers. It's the dilemma of realizing that the reason you started playing, the identity that you formed in your head and spent hours and days and years working toward, is not something that you can actually become. Um, because the person you've seen isn't the, a person in the way that you are a person. And the life that you thought they had was a small fraction, if any, of the reality of what their actual lives consisted of. They don't have human limitations because we never got to see any of that, or rarely got to see any of that. And it's usually the negative part, if we did. So for people like me, the dilemma is in realizing that in terms of how to answer this, the question central to this uh, post is what do you want message hey man i got some terrible bunny oh, onion pick it up bottom line what do you want what do you want and if asked that question you know now or when i was a high school athlete college athlete it would have been some sort of generic answer like i want to be happy or i want to be a professional blank player or i want to play blank with very little detail beyond some superficial explanation of what I thought it meant to be the image of what I thought it would be, that thing would be, rather than an actual detailed explanation that could show that I understood the reality of what it meant to be that or do that or live that life. Now for me, anyone asking me more pointed questions beyond the generic, what do you want at that point in time when I was competing would likely re receive a response similar to this. So Dave, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Well, I'm a, an executive assistant at a major pet products company. Dave, I don't want you to tell us what you do. I want you to tell us who you are. Oh, all right. Um, I'm a pretty good guy. I, um, I like playing tennis on occasion. Um, also, not your hobbies, Dave. Just simple. Tell us who you are. I just... Maybe you could give me an example of what a good answer would be. Um, what did you say? <laughs> you want Lou to tell you who you are. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I'm a nice, easygoing man. I might be a little bit indecisive at times. Um, Dave, you're describing your personality. I want to know who you are. I don't know what the hell you want me to say. I mean, I'm sorry, I just, I want to answer your question. Just not, not doing it right, I, I guess. I think we're getting a picture, Dave. Let's move on. Message! That's a great clip, right? <laughs> Pretty funny. And an even juicier question that adds a layer to this as well that I'll dive into a bit. But for now, my fumbled answer to the original notebook question of what do you want? As a teenager, let's just take that for example. I was playing basketball, football, baseball. Of somebody asked me, what do I want? My answer would have been something to the effect of to get rich, to be famous, to have a nice car, have a big house, to buy things, uh, to take care of everyone, take care of everyone I love, um, to make it, whatever that means. 
Um, you hear me say it a lot, but I don't know what that means. Uh, but as a 36 year old, I realized that in reality, my teenage self would be lacking things like who I had to become as a person, what I'd have to give up to become that person, uh, how long I'd actually live, uh, what type of relationships I'd like to have, who I'd have to work to become to have those relationships, uh, what I was good at and bad at outside of sports and so on and so on. Um, you know, all the stuff you can learn in sports, but something that things that are rarely made obvious to athletes along the way amidst the focus on points, scores, uh, some contracts and all the things our, our athletes have traditionally been recognized for and, and had things pounded in their heads. So it's the stuff of substance, but not the stuff that makes headlines. So rarely do a lot of people get exposed to it if you're an athlete when you're coming up. Message. Oh, yeah. Pick it up. So I say all that to say, you know, that's the beautiful thing about the Internet now and, and what things like social media platforms and um, different outlets have done for us as competitors and connoisseurs of all things athletics is that since we're former athletes now, right, former athletes, um, it's allowed us to take a closer look at the people behind the performances we see on screens. It's allowed us to see more actual highs and lows of our favorite sports heroes um, and, and uh, you know, things that come with what's at the very base of the stardom we see when they perform. Bottom line is they're human beings just like us. And up until now, though, We've never had so much unfiltered, unbiased, and, and as close to raw access to our sports heroes as we have had today in just about every major sport. It's, it's really a crazy thing to think about. What it's done for athletes and future athletes, in my opinion, is to paint a better picture as to the life path they may already be on or may be looking towards. And for former athletes, um, it's done a lot of the same if, if you've kept up. Um, it used to be that when you know the spotlight moved away from a player or moved away from this player, you know whatever sport you're talking about, that person that we grew to love just kind of faded into oblivion, occasionally being seen as a sportscaster, talk show host, or guest of some entertainment network. But now, all too often, we get to see past the biggest and brightest stages of major news and entertainment outlets into the reality behind these athletes. Sometimes it endears us even more, but. Sometimes it's a bit cautionary or precautionary. Um, but either way, I view it as a, a, a net good in answering the question from the clips in this, this post, this podcast. If you're like me, you're probably still answering the question differently each time you hear it. Even ask today, what do you want? And who are you? If, again, what do you want and who are you? If you don't have sports. And it's okay not to have an answer or to change the answer each time you're asked it if it's applicable. We're human beings after all. And if you're an old and washed up athlete like us, then your answer is going to change because the game is far from over for you. If you know what the game is, you know what the game is being played. So how could you truly um, ever have a final answer when there's still so much time on the clock? I do have one suggestion, though, if you've made it this far and, and you're still with me, um, still with us. Start remembering this for, for former athletes. Realize this, because I know we all secretly realize it internally, but realize it and, and live it. With or without the sport, you've always been one thing, a competitor. And that doesn't stop because no one's cheering or because you're wearing a different uniform to compete in every day. This is my uniform. You see us, we got a couple different shirts, variations, but, <laughs> you know, bottom line is this is still, still a competitor. And the rest of the details, as far as your life story goes, are really up to you to write. But it can't happen if you stop keeping score. So don't stop keeping score. Old is dope. Let's get rid of the notebook. <laughs> Peace. All right, that was 30 or Fool. This is a portion of our podcast segments where we hope to get some feedback from you to continue to make these things better. Um, again, the whole point of this is to start a conversation around things that are unique to former athletes like you and me and like people you know, uh, to hopefully draw the conversations to how we can continue to, to continue to improve and continue to compete with ourselves in life after sports to be better than we ever were as athletes, better people, not necessarily athletes. So 
in line with that, to get some feedback, we put up a, uh, <clears throat> a widget on our webpage at oldandwashedup.com backslash washpod. Again, that's oldandwashedup.com, all one word, um, and not an ampersand. There's an and there, dot com backslash washpod. If you go there, uh, just go there and click the appropriate button. It will literally tell you this is the appropriate button. I have the arrow down there, and you'll see it. Uh, all you got to do is click it, enter your information, your email address, and your name, and then you can record an audio recording, and it'll go directly to us, and we will hopefully bring that uh, up in our next podcast segments that we released uh, and kind of speak to what we believe to be you know, the topic or a question and try to answer if we can. So, again, we appreciate your feedback in advance. Before we close out, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button, that subscribe button, and turn on your notifications for future releases of the Wasp Pod. Uh, and this has been 30 or Full. We appreciate you. Hope to hear from you. Peace.